Hey guys, I wanted to take a few minutes today and just kind of show you uh, kind of our home away from home. We've got tours on this channel you can see of the two houses we built in Dolphin Island, Alabama. But that was kind of showing you the uh, the rosy side of uh, beach house ownership. Um, the reality is um, a lot of times we have hurricane damage and we have to fix things. This uh, drone video is right after Hurricane Sally last year. I was down there doing some fixes. You can see the beach is in a long way from some erosion. But uh, we got we got nicked by Ida. It wasn't terrible. It definitely wasn't as bad as Louisiana got it. But uh, you can see here I'm pulling onto the island and it was bad enough. We're having to cross checkpoints to get to our houses. And I titled this video ICF Regrets simply because this picture is kind of famous. Uh, after Hurricane Michael, Mexico Beach, there was this one house left standing, and it was actually a new Dura built house. Um, and when I built our houses in 15 and 16, I was doing a lot of ICF work, but not uh, a lot of light deck work and hadn't really wrapped my head around what's possible. And just to show you how bad it can get, this picture here is an oil rig that was directly off of our... Uh, southeast shore of our lots um, after Katrina. It washed ashore from um, her um, uh, from Louisiana. It came off its moorings and washed all the way to Alabama and washed ashore on Dolphin Island. So pretty crazy what can happen. That That's a good chance that that oil rig took out the, uh, the houses uh, that we built over the top of. So, like I said, we, we just got a glancing blow from Ida. Um, most of what we had was beach erosion, and um, I'll get into later in the video kind of why our erosion can be so bad um, and what the Corps of Engineers kind of did to exacerbate that over the last 50 years and what they're saying they're going to do to do better in the future. But these pilings are actually from the old house houses that were there before we built, um, before Katrina and Ivan, or Ivan and Katrina in 04 and 05, took out both houses. And um, these pilings are generally under many feet of sand at this point and not a hazard, but after a storm, you've got old rebar and concrete and old pilings sticking up like landmines just looking to hurt somebody. So anytime we get a chance at them, I like to clean them up. A lot of people just wait till they get covered back up by the wind. But I just think about the, the jagged edges of these things sticking up and uh, getting somebody's foot. And we just tried our best to get it all out. I think I've got almost all of it out after this trip. Um, back in 2017, after Hurricane Nate, I got a lot of concrete debris out, but I couldn't get the pilings out because I didn't have that nifty little tree puller for my skid steer at the time. And that made it a lot easier to just get the physics. Uh, you got to lift them straight up. They're down in the water table, and the suction is pretty great on those things. So got those cleaned up. Um, but like I said, most of what we had was driveway damage. You see my dad here trying to help out. We had a, we had a little damage to our uh, handicap ramp. We lost part of the railing. Um, this is some more of the rebar sticking up out of a slab that was way down in the ground. I got I got it down into the water table and cut it off. So, I mean, it's just a lot of little stuff this time. We didn't lose any siding. We had no wind damage at all. This is another house. Uh, this, this is a lot in front of us up the way. Well, you can see rebar out in the water. That's normally under many feet of sand, but right now is obviously a pretty good hazard. Okay, so I thought I'd walk down the beach a little bit and show you some uh, engineering disasters, if you will. A lot of people don't want to spend the money dropping actual pilings in for their landings. And these six by sixes and stuff, they're just not, you, if they're not jetted in deep, they'll, you know, they'll fail, they'll break off. And these people just gave up. You can see where they just patched it in. Now they got stairs coming down around the side. But again, they, uh, they don't put them on pilings and they end up, see, I mean, they're not losing, like we tend to lose just that little bottom section. They're losing their whole set of stairs. And uh, now they've got a set of stairs going out the back of the house so they can get here. Okay, so as I pan over here, I'm going to show you a bigger disaster. And this guy uh, supposedly owns the company that built, like, the Atlanta Falcons Stadium or something. So the guys should know construction. He's got these cable rails just dangling all loose. So this, okay, so I should say this. After Katrina, the Dolphin Island passed some stuff that said, you know, you cannot do rebar in concrete anymore. As you've seen from a lot of my clips, there's still rebar poking up out of the ground after every storm that's just embedded in pilings, embedded in concrete, and everything. 
But what happens is the water, the wave action gets under this stuff, pulls all the debris out, leaving these huge voids. I mean, I could drive my skid under there almost. Um, and then the weight of the waves on top of it crushes. And he's had these engineers come in like two or three times tell him how to do this concrete patio without having any uh, rebar. I mean, they won't let you use post-tension cables. I mean, all the things that would work in all likelihood, they don't let them happen. And look at that. He actually did like a little board form this time. That's actually pretty cool. It's sad that this happened because, guys, if you look at this concrete, it's like two months old. <laughs> this is like a tragedy. Uh, and But, I mean, it's also kind of bullheaded. I mean, this has happened. I think this house got built the same year as my second house of 2016. And I know this is the, at least the second failure of this patio. Um, and if the codes won't allow you to do it right, I don't think I'd do it at all. I mean, look at all that undercutting, under, undercutting of the water. And these, these piers are supposed to do something, but they don't, obviously. Obviously, you think they don't. <laughs> but anyway, um, there's lots of things. I'll get into all the, uh, the why the beach does this and, you know, real mitigation and what could be done and all that. But uh, in the meantime, we just try to do things that are sustainably, you know, workable. It's like this house here just to kind of show you how much sand's gone. You see the green on these pilings. That's where the beach normally is. I mean, that's about four feet right here. And his parking pad is way up there. I mean, it's almost over my head. And that's all that sand's gone. And it'll spend all winter, unless we have more storms, coming back. Um, but, you know, it's, uh, it's an in and out thing. But we usually have a net loss at the end of the day. And they're, 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 the Corps of Engineers is doing the dredging a little differently now. But... You know 60 years of their old practices have done done their work so anyway i'll uh keep keep going here and show you some other stuff okay so after a couple days of hard work we have got it all put back together and renters showing up uh, about an hour after we leave so um you can see we've kind of cleaned up the beach gotten rid of all the debris rebar old piling sticking up we've uh, fixed our driveways got a couple big hay bales there to protect uh, the handicap ramp until the beach can build itself back up. Um, instead of hauling off the old pilings, I used them to line the driveway where the berm has washed out and uh, people might not be able to see where to back up. And if they get in that sand, they are officially stuck. Uh, my neighbor, Dominic, told me he's very tired of helping my renters dig out after they back into the sand. So I did what I could to keep them, uh, keep them lined up and... We're heading home to Missouri and coming back in about a month for actual vacation, hopefully. Fingers crossed there's no more storms. Okay, so now that I've kind of shown you the, the situation and what we deal with a little bit, I want to kind of explain to you what how the, how the barrier islands are created and what the Corps of Engineers has been doing that's been damaging, damaging the situation for a number of years. So this is Mobile Bay. You can see Dolphin Island in the bottom left. And... Dolphin Island is created by about four rivers that flow into Mobile Bay that end up flowing, uh, pushing sand and sediment out into the Gulf and then wave action and storms roll it up into Dolphin Island, creating Dolphin Island. Then Dolphin Island donates um, sand to the next island in the chain, to the next island of the chain, to the next island of the chain, which creates the Mississippi Sound. Um, and that creates a, a intercoastal waterway that's kind of protected from the waves and allows barges to travel from Mobile Bay into New Orleans in fairly protected water. So this is um, an image that's a kind of a close up of uh, the mouth of the Mobile Bay um, where we have about three miles between Dolphin Island and Fort Morgan, which is like the Gulf Shores, Orange Beach side of the bay. And you can see the dark water uh, the dark water in the middle under that green line and that's where the Corps of Engineers has been dredging the ship channel to allow access for the big ships to get into the bay for decades and they do that um, the government wants to do everything as cheap as possible so they do that with deep water dredges and they're the cheapest to operate but just like when I'm talking about ICF being cheaper over the long run Shallow water dredges and like uh, pump and pipe systems are cheaper to operate. So over the lifetime of their, you know, usable life, they're able to put the sand back where it would naturally be deposited much easier and cheaper than the deep water dredges. So what they've been doing for decades is they dredge the sand that would normally end up just south of our island and re-nourish the beaches naturally. 
and they um, they go dump it in the deeper part of the Gulf where it's just gone forever and to never wash up on the shore. So we've been, you know, losing sand, you know, since the 50s or 60s. Um, you know, every year we lose a little bit of sand, so the storms do more damage than they would. And uh, a lot of a lot of small town politics and stuff like that debate on why and what to do and yada yada. But the Corps of Engineers, at least a couple years ago, did admit that you know their dredging practices are definitely not helping and that they're going to start depositing the sand back closer to the island. We're still not sure, you know, as long as they're using deep water dredges, we're not sure that that's going to be close enough. But you know, we'll see. So this is an interesting time lapse of satellite photos of the island from the mid '80s as Pelican Island. Uh, on the south side of Dolphin Island, slowly moves. This is just kind of showing you how the sand is supposed to build back into the beaches. And normally the Pelican Island happens over like um, a couple hundred years. It'll collapse in on the island. You see the cut in the middle of the island is actually the Katrina cut where the island was severed after uh, after Katrina. But you can see that Pen Pelican Peninsula actually is now connected. And I'll show you a close-up here in a second of um, it actually swallowed the um, the state fishing pier. Okay, so this is a close-up of the south side of the island, and that is the fishing pier. You can see directly that straight line coming off of the beach. And after Katrina in 2005, you see Pelican uh, Peninsula, Pelican Island turning into Pelican Peninsula. I started coming to the island to build houses in 2008, and it looked about like this where the pier still crossed water but was getting landlocked and then after about three big hurricanes in 2008 it connected and landlocked the pier and has the pier has been landlocked for about 13 years now it is completely on the sand it is hundreds of yards away from the actual water now which is, is sad but um it's kind of just part of the natural progression of the sand um, through wave action and storms that build the island to the west um just happens over a slower period of time than most people are willing to uh, accept. But uh, just kind of wanted to show you guys this because, I mean, a lot of people just go, oh, yeah, the beaches are eroding, this, that. They don't realize that a lot of its issues are man-made, but it's also a, a very long-term cycle. It, it happens over hundreds of years, and uh, it's pretty interesting to watch. Okay, here's a quick drone shot from a couple months ago where you can actually see just how far the end of the pier is from the actual water anymore. But ultimately, guys, the juice is absolutely worth the squeeze. The place is wonderful. Time slows down on the island, and um, it's got so much rich history, and it's all worth preserving. Um, all of its problems are man-made, for sure. Um, the solutions are probably man-made, too, and that's just going to be uh, the... A matter of getting the right people in the right rooms making the right decisions and uh, hasn't happened yet but we're hoping we obviously got married down here uh, back in 2016 right about the time the houses were done um, this is about that time there in this photo but uh, the prettiest sunsets and sunrises you'll see anywhere in the country and uh, really wonderful place to visit just hoping to uh, kind of keep it going for years to come